What is the mistake most people make when they have kids? Well, they really stop uh, focusing on their role mm. as husband or wife, and they start being totally focused on the kids, and they, they stop carving out time for each other. Now, there are going to be times when you do, like mm. when the children are really young and you're up all night, right. and you're breastfeeding or changing diapers or... You know, dad's getting up every other minute or mom's up every minute and you're surviving those times. I'm talking about across the years. Yes. You you recognize that those kids come and then they go. Mm -hmm. And when they go, it's the two it's of you two there. Again. And if you haven't known each other for the last 18 years, when they leave, you're going to be sitting there looking at somebody you used to know. Ooh. And you don't want that to happen. If you were really great lovers and intimate and and best friends 18 years ago, and you haven't been for the last 18 years, and then they mm. go off to college, you're sitting there looking at somebody like, didn't I used to know you? Wow. And she, I think she would say, you just don't ever make that mistake. Don't ever let that gap come in there. Now, in short term, of course. Right. You, you sacrifice for your children whatever it takes for them to flourish and be nurtured and do what you take. But across time, across the years, you remember to nurture that relationship between right. the husband and wife. You remember that they're going to leave someday and it's going to be the two of you. Take care of that relationship so when they leave, you're not sitting there with a stranger. Some wisdom right there. That's some wisdom right there. Yeah, uh, she's talked about that before. That's how I know she would say that. Right. I'm curious. It seems like in this time, it seems like this. Maybe because I'm in L.A., I see more of it like this, that it's really hard to find a quality partner uh, that's a great match for you. In general, in, in the U.S., I'm speaking, it's hard for people to find a great partner and stay in a healthy relationship. I've heard... People say that, you know, 80% of being in a great relationship is picking the right person, is choosing the right person. I'm not sure if you would agree with that. But why do you think it's so hard for people to choose the right partner when we're always choosing something from a pain or from a need or a lack as opposed to a healthy, conscious, whole place? Well, I, I think it is, you, you got to know what you're looking for. And mm. I, I think, you know, so many people... There's a difference between Mr. Right and Mr. Right Now. You know, Mrs. Uh, right and Mrs. Right Now. It's what is it you're what is it you're looking for? And I, I think we have to know ourselves mm. to know what we you know what we really need. And you know, sometimes if if we don't really know what's driving us you know, it may be insecurity and, and we bring out the worst in each other. I see people all the time on stage where you've got somebody that's really dependent with somebody that's really over controlling and they bring out the worst in each other and they think it's a perfect fit. Oh, mm. we just fit like hand in glove because she was very passive and he was very dominant. And so it just seemed like, wow, what a perfect match. It wasn't a perfect match at all. It was pathological from the get-go. You know, she needed to get a backbone, and the last thing she needed was somebody dominant mm -hmm. that played into her passivity. Is the worst thing they could do. You got to know what is it that's attracting me to this person. Is it a pathological need to be controlled, or is it that I really admire this person? You got to really ask yourself what is it that's attracting me to this person. Mm -hmm. Is it somebody that makes me feel safe in the moment, but it's not really what I need? You gotta ask yourself, what's driving you in the moment? And a lot of people don't ask that question. I mean, how do they, if someone has dealt with a lot of, I guess, trauma from their past, is it possible for them to choose a healthy relationship until they heal or start to at least work on that healing process? Or are they always gonna kind of fall into that trap? Well, I think you're gonna do one of two things. It, when you enter a relationship, you're either going to contribute to or contaminate that relationship based on what you bring with you when you show up. Right. If you bring a wounded soul, if you bring 
open wounds, if you bring resentments, if you bring a lot of unfinished emotional business from being cheated on mm. or hurt or abandoned or neglected, and you bring all that pain to the relationship, you're going to contaminate that relationship. Or if you've healed all of those things, where you come to a relationship saying, I want but don't need a partner, mm. now you're going to contribute to the relationship. So I think if you are really hurt, you got to heal that hurt before you can go into a relationship and not contaminate it. It's like baggage. You're going to pick it baggage up and carry it with you and set it down in the relationship, or you're going to empty it out before you go. And I think that's why I think everybody, everybody should do an autopsy mm. on the relationships they've been in wow. before they go to the relationship they're headed towards. What should they be asking themselves about previous what relationships? What did I do? Mm. What did I do to contribute to the demise of that relationship? Not blaming them, 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 but... Yeah, they're gone. Right. <laughs> they, they ain't bringing them unless it's a really weird relationship. Mm -hmm. What did I do to contribute to the demise of this relationship? Was I too passive? Was I too domineering? Was I too suspicious? Was I too naive? Was I... What did I do? Even if you were cheated on, even if you were abused, even if you were just completely run over in the relationship, what did you do mm -hmm. to contribute to that so you don't do it again? Right. And if you can own whatever role you had in that so you can adjust that and not do it again, then you've got a chance of not repeating those mistakes in this new relationship. You can't do that unless you do an autopsy on the one you've been in. Sound advice right there. What about questions you should ask someone before you're going to get committed to them, whether that be in a marriage or just an exclusively committed you know, dating relationship, to know that you're setting yourself up for potentially a good relationship? Well, you got to know what your deal breakers are. Oh, yeah. There are deal breakers, right? Right. And... Uh, you know, you're not going to find a perfect candidate. Right. Uh, you know, if you if you find an 80% candidate and the 20% that's not there aren't deal breakers, you can grow the 20% faster than you can find it. Right, <laughs> right, right. Because <laughs> you can say, well, I'm going to wait until I find 100%. Well, no, you're better off to take the 80 and grow the 20 or 10 of the 20 or whatever it might be, as long as they aren't deal breakers. And there aren't many deal breakers. Deal breakers are like physical abuse, mm -hmm. drug or alcohol abuse, and they won't get treatment for it. They won't have, mm -hmm. you know, there are those things that if, if they have some of those things that are just non-negotiable, that if you were in the relationship and those things occurred, you would leave, mm -hmm. then don't get in to start with. Right. If there's somebody that's going to hit you, don't get in because right. if you were in it and they did, you would leave. Right. So that's a deal breaker. Don't mm -hmm. get in. But you, you've got to decide. You know what are your deal breakers? If if you are on this earth, Robin believed she was put on this earth to be a mother. Mm. If I was absolutely one hundred percent committed in this life to not have children. That's that would be a deal breaker. Yeah, right. And she should know that up front. That, that wasn't the case, but it, had it been, she would want to know that. Mm -hmm. um, if if her her father was a bad alcoholic like mine, and she said up front, I, I will never marry a man that drinks. Mm. And as it turned out, uh, I was committed to not being a drinker because of what my dad had demonstrated to me. And, you know, we were kind of facing it in that regard because mm -hmm. you drink. Actually, I don't. I'm sorry. Because I thought she wanted to go out drinking. <laughs> right. yeah, I was just telling her the truth. I'm not your guy. If you want right. to go clubbing, I ain't your guy. Yeah. Uh, I thought I was giving her the wrong answer. <laughs> and she said, oh, okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> Little did I know that was the right answer. <laughs> um, but there, you got to know what your deal breakers are. And, you know, aside from that, 
you, you got to see if there's compatibility, if it mm-hmm. feels right. There's got to be chemistry. Right. There's got to be chemistry. If there's not chemistry, you can't, you can't grow chemistry. That's there. That's it's either there or it's not. I don't yeah. care. I don't care if he's the most handsome guy in the world or she's the most gorgeous girl in the world. If there's not chemistry, that won't grow. Mm-hmm. You'll, yeah. you'll know that right up front.